Okay, guys, I want to show you something interesting that I literally was just led to. <clears throat> this will be a super quick video. Um, but it's something to point out for you guys to do a study on. We're not going to read all of John 6. There's a part at the end that's important that I want to get to. And you're going to be a little bit surprised, I think. Jesus feeds 5,000. Then we have Jesus walks on, oh, excuse me, walks on water. I am the bread of life. So y'all should be remembering what this is. But the part we're interested in is right here. The words of eternal life. And there's a commentary with it. I'm going to throw that in there also. But there's something interesting in here. Now some of you have already read this. And may have even read this recently. And know what I'm about to talk about. We talk about a lot about salvation. About works. About the spirit and the flesh. The things that we're doing here, justification, all these different things pertaining once saved, always saved, all that stuff. And there's, <coughs> there's a lot of people in different camps. They are adding works to salvation. They're, uh, it's salvation, but I can sin all I want. I can do all anything that I want. Everybody's in a little bit different place on this. But there's something interesting here. And when it's funny, too, because when he says this, People turn away from him too. Because people want to be justified justified by their flesh. This is Jesus himself telling you it's not in the it's not the flesh. The flesh profits nothing. We're going to start in John 6, verse 60. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This is a hard saying. Who can listen to it? Now, what saying was he was he referring to? Well, we go up here a little bit and we'll see it. So he up here. In, starting in verse 53 down to verse 59, the saying was he was talking about his flesh and his blood and whoever eats it. So he already had them in a weird place. But then he drops his bomb on them. But Jesus, knowing in himself that his disciples were grumbling about this, said to them, Do you take offense at this? How many grace preachers watching this video who have that same problem? Do you take offense at this? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh is no help at all. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. So what he's doing two things here. In this statement, he is saying the parable or the saying that I just told you is a, has a spiritual aspect to it. You're not literally going to eat my flesh and drink my blood. This is a spiritual event. In the spirit realm, there's, things operate way differently than they do in the physical realm. But he's also saying something else. He's telling them, what you do in your flesh is not going to benefit you. Now, of course, after he died, sin was dealt with. The flesh was dealt with. When you go and you preach the gospel to people, their sins don't matter. You don't even have to mention it. Look, you need to believe. He'll take care of you and deal with you on everything else. But you need to believe. When you believe and the Spirit enters you, then the changes happen. But that's between you and him. Not between me, you, and him. I don't need to tell you to relieve, relieve yourself of any of your sins. He'll get you there. Trust me. <clears throat> so he's telling them here in verse 63, the flesh is no help at all. The words that I've spoken to your spirit and life. The flesh does you no good. What you do in the flesh serves no purpose to you. But now in verse 64, but there are some of you who do not believe. So here is Jesus in his words. Telling us salvation. Telling us adding works. Your ability to obey. None of that stuff is going to do you any good if you're doing it in the flesh. It is a spiritual worship. For Jesus knew from the beginning who those were who did not believe. And who it was who would betray him. From the beginning of what? From the beginning of everything? He was there. <clears throat> Verse 65, and he said, this is why I told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted him by the Father. That kind of leads a little bit to predestination, doesn't it? So, is this Jesus saying we're given a portion of the Holy Spirit and faith before we're saved? And with the help of the Holy Spirit, we get saved. 
Now, people can deny it still. I've heard testimony of people saying, I felt this warm feeling. I fought it off. I didn't want it. They denied the Holy Spirit. Very interesting stuff here, guys. Verse 66, after this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer walked with him. With that statement, he blew them away. They couldn't handle it. Because at that time, everything was about the flesh and justifying the flesh. Works, law, obeyance. He came and did all that for us and took that away. Yes, if somebody becomes a Christian and murders somebody, they are still going to heaven. If somebody becomes a Christian and is a homosexual, they're still going to heaven. If somebody becomes a Christian and does anything that goes against God, they are still going to heaven. You may not have any rewards, but you're still going. You, When you're saved, you're saved. Why? Because Christ did it on the cross. It's all been dealt with. It is finished. The greatest phrase, the greatest Three words ever said in human history. It is finished. And it was finished 2,000 years ago. So why are people still... When a house, when you're done building a house, do you keep building? No. I'm done. The house is finished. Now let's go to verse 67. Look what he says to the disciples who hung around. So Jesus said to the 12, do you want to go away as well? So he's giving them a choice. Simon Peter... Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. They got it. They believed. And we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. Jesus answered them, Did I not choose you, the twelve, and yet one of you is a devil? He spoke of Judas, the son of Simon, as Cariot, for he, one of the twelve, was going to betray him. So even though he picked people and they believed, there were still people within that group, within that 12. There was still one who wasn't true. When you look at this from a place of revelation, this set of scriptures, this gives you a very interesting and a very powerful revelation and understanding. That's what I've been telling you guys. There's stuff hidden in there. You read it one time, I've done John 6 before, you read it, then you come back and read it again, and you're like, wait a minute, I didn't see that before, and there it is. It's all, it's all what we do in the Spirit. Our worship is in the Spirit. Like he says right here, the flesh is no help at all. Let's read the commentary and then end. I'm going to try to keep this short. The teaching of this chapter involves a deliberate act of Christ to arrest a revolutionary movement that was gathering around his person and making him its figurehead. So he wasn't his time yet. He was trying to stop it. That's in John 6.15. Therefore, he set himself to teach that these people had misconceived the meaning of his ministry, which was not intended to raise a standard of revolt against Rome, but to lead a spiritual revolution. The effect of his words was precisely what he expected and must have shattered any ambitions that had begun to stir in the hearts of his disciples. In John 6.41, the men who the night before wished to crown him murmured at him. In John 6.52, they strove among themselves. In John 6.60, many of his disciples said that his sayings were hard to understand and still harder to be obeyed. Really? So now, we're going to obey what Christ said, which I've had people throw that at me before. You need to obey what Christ said. What did he say? <clears throat> In John 6.66, many went back. And now, as the shades of evening began to fall and the synagogue was almost empty, he was left alone with a little company of twelve who had sorrowfully watched the overthrow of their hopes. Christ's, path Christ's pathetic question Will ye also go away? Elicited from Peter. Now, not that it was a pathetic question. He, he did it for effect. Elicited from Peter a reply that proved that the inner meaning of his words had already broken upon their souls. Thy words give us and nourish within us the eternal life. The question on section 128 to be found on page 232-233 will serve as a review at this point. So, 
truth hurts. Jesus knew this. That's why he said the things that he says, said the way that he said them. That's why I'm covering a, a playlist of parables. There's a lot of hidden meaning in the parables. That's why I did the book of Proverbs. There's a lot of hidden meaning in the book of Proverbs. That's why I did the small books of the Bible. Guys, there's a reason why I'm doing these things the way I'm doing them and in the timing that I'm doing them. The Spirit is leading on this. The book of Romans. I did most of the videos I already have filmed. I did in December. There was no opportunity to finish until the time was right. And what I'm filming now, I'm in chapter 10. What I'm filming now, you guys aren't going to see for a couple more days because I'm doing one a day. But unless I don't do any videos, then I'll do two a day. But the stuff coming out of Romans is astounding and it proves what we have. It proves what we see. It proves once saved, always saved. Everything I'm covering proves once saved, always saved. It proves... Everything that we believe and have been preaching as grace preachers from the Bible. And it's not me giving commentary and opinion. It's the scriptures that are saying it. And people are still getting mad. <laughs> I think it's funny. I think it's, kind of, I think it's actually kind of comical that they, there are people out there who claim to be Christian. Claim to follow the Bible. I know the Bible. They don't know squat because they don't read it. They go watch other people's videos. They go listen to people in, in some church somewhere just yelling and running off at the mouth and not ever saying anything. And they're not reading the word. Some of you have test, gave me testimony. Hey, I took your advice and I started reading. Wow, it's really opening up to me. Every one of you need to be taking your own time with God. You want to tithe? Tithe 10% of your time to him. 2.4 hours a day studying. Read the word. I'm telling you, once you do it, when you see your first revelation, just like that, it's going to go, and you're, you're going to be, the spirit is going to come alive in you, and you're not going to be able to put that book down. You can't stop after that. I can't stop. I'm lay up wee hours in the morning going through Bible verses, watching other people's videos for ideas, looking for new stuff to study. Because I may cover... A subject, do an hour-long video, but I may see something two days later that somebody else covered that I didn't catch. Do a subsequent video, add it in there. But these people are so adamant that it's their way. And they're missing the whole point of salvation. When a car manufacturer builds a car, does he build it to your standard or their standards? Now, if he built it to your standards, what kind of car do you think he'd be driving? Probably wouldn't be very safe and it'd have a million horsepower for most people. But they have a standard that they go by. Now, you conform yourself to the standard of driving that vehicle. The controls that it has, the features that it has, you adapt to that. Do you take the vehicle and then start changing it to match you? Well, sometimes we modify the vehicle a little bit, but it's still the same car. The Word of God is the same way. You can have any idea that you want. You can come up with any understanding that you want. But if it doesn't match what Scripture says, you're wrong. I know this because it happened to me. I'm not using this as a derogatory term towards anybody. It's the truth. You have to change your understanding to match the features the Bible is giving you. So if you have an idea about something, say for example, America is Babylon. If you have an idea that something's a certain way, you go pour over the scriptures and find the proof. You don't just walk in misunderstanding. This is part of your spiritual worship with God. If you take the time to look it up, you find what the truth is. Now, at that point, you have a choice. Well, you know what? I'm just going to skip over that stuff. I don't like that because I want to believe it's this. Or, I was wrong. I'm going to change my understanding to what the Bible says. I used to think America was Babylon at the beginning of 2019. Guess what? I got changed. Because I saw in the scriptures that it said Israel. So I changed my understanding to match what the Bible said. Now, there's still going to be people that are going to hold on to that misconception. They're going to hold on to that understanding. But um, after the rapture happens, no one will have an excuse. No one. 
And y'all think it's going to be sunshine and rainbows after that? Nope. After the rapture happens, according to the descriptions that are in prophecy, it will be the worst time this earth has ever seen. A thousand times worse than you can imagine. And that's just the first three and a half years. That's not counting the next three and a half years. That are going to be even worse than that. But people got their own ideas about things. I don't want my own ideas and I don't want my own opinion. I want everything that I say and do to be structured around what the Bible says. Because I know this is truth. I have faith. I don't lean on my own understanding. I don't want to lean on my own understanding. And anytime I find something in here that proves me wrong, I change what I think. I've done videos telling, saying that and correcting myself. Some of y'all have been going back and looking at much of my older videos. But as over, over time, you see the change happening. That was the Holy Spirit teaching me, bringing me to a better understanding. Now, I haven't gotten rid of those videos because there's other stuff I, that's in those videos that's good information. So I leave them up. So use discernment if you watch videos from the beginning of 2019. And then listening to what it, what I'm saying now. Does that mean I flip-flopped on it? No, I mean I learned. Holy Spirit taught me. Brought me to a better place. And my brothers and sisters showed me a lot of things that I didn't know. And things that I was wrong on. But guys, look at what Jesus says here. This is amazing. Do your own study on this. Do your own research on these kinds of things. Because there's keywords in here you can go do searches on. Here, let me give you an example. Let's see, do you take offense at this? So I'm ascending to where he was before. It is the Spirit who gives life. So you pick a phrase that stands out. John 6, 63, it is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh is no help at all. 2 Corinthians 3, 6, who has made us sufficient to be ministers of a new covenant, not of the letter, but of the spirit, for the letter, or law, kills, but the spirit gives life. People that are trying to be good, people that are trying to be righteous, people that are trying to justify their flesh, you're making a mistake. The Bible tells you you're making a mistake. Now let's go, flesh is no help at all. Let's look that one up. It's only in one spot. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and life. So do your own research, guys. Look up stuff. When you start to explore... You'll be amazed at what you stumble across. And it's the Holy Spirit leading you. And remember what the Bible says. Those being led by the Spirit, there is no law over them. Oh. I didn't get the exact words right, so and those led by God's Spirit are God's sons, for all who are led by God's Spirit are God's children. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are children of God. Romans eight fourteen. Where's the one about there's no law over them? That, that might be it. Okay, let's run to Romans 8.14 real quick. Romans 8. I haven't uploaded that one yet. <clears throat> oh, here's more on the... <laughs> Romans 8.12. So then, brothers, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. <laughs> Proves what we were just talking about in John, John 6. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if you live to the Spirit, you put your deeds, death to the deeds of the body, you will live. So that's awesome because we were trying to find something else. And look, we found more proof to prove the point of what was going on in John 6. That's funny. That's funny. <laughs> Oh, 
So Romans 8 hadn't been up, uploaded yet, but I'll get it up there. So there you go, guys. Cool stuff. But you know, that's how that's when you're rightly dividing, that's what happens. You end up getting led to all kinds of strange places. But you end up getting led to all kinds of very interesting revelations. And it's awesome. One more note. I have uh, uploaded a new playlist. And it is um, four videos about repentance by The Door Ministries with Michael Pearl. Really good. I've been watching this guy for a little bit, about a month now. Um, he's on point. Really good teacher. And this four video series is well worth watching. Talking about repentance. And what it actually is and uh, he uses a lot of scripture and it's it's on track so do yourself a favor if you got some time and you're bored you want to watch some videos uh, uh, learn more about something go and find that playlist in my list of playlists uh, it's um, just titled repentance and watch those four videos and I think you'd be pretty blessed by that and he's a, he's a good that's a good channel to sub to also he puts out quite a few videos and he talks about everything and he does questions and answers too all right, guys, that's all I got. I love y'all, and I will see you in the next video.